today we are going to make the orthographic projection of this given object in third angle projection and we have already discussed about the first and third angle projection in the last videos you can check them out by the help of the link in the description box below in the third angle projection we have to make respective views of this given object according to this rule so we have to make the top view in this upper part and we have to make the front view below it and we have to make left side view in this side and i'm going to start with the front view we can see that the height of the front view is 65 and the length of the front view is 100 so we have to make a rectangle of 65 by 100 in this side we have fixed the boundary for the front view and our front view will be made only within this area now i'm going to locate this and this point in our front view and we can see that the total distance between these two points is 36 that means these two points are 36 by 2 that is equals to 18 mm away from the center line so first of all i'm going to make a center line in the front view and we have to fix a point which is 36 by 2 that is 18 mm away from the center line so we have fixed these two points already now we can see that this is 8 mm off so we have to make a line which is 8 mm off from this and this point like this and join these two points now we are going to look at this and this point in our front view and we can see that this point is 15 mm up from this point so we have to make a line which is 15 mm up from this point like this we should be very much careful while drawing this part because this part consists of the arc of radius 30 and there is also a straight line of length 20 which is given here and we have to calculate the length of this line because the length of this line is not given here so first of all we have to calculate the length of this part and we can see here that the total length of this line is 100 and we have the radius of this arc as 30 so it means that its length will be 30 up to this point and the length of this part is also 30 which is given here and this part is also 30 so to calculate the length of this part we have to do 100 minus 30 minus 30 minus 30 which is equals to 10 and when we divide 10 by 2 we will get 5 on its side so our total length of this part would be 5 and the length of this part will be also 5 so the length of this straight line from the a's is 5 so i'm going to make a line of 5 mm from the a's on both sides like this now we have to find the center for this arc now we have to draw a line which is 30 mm up from this point then we can easily find the center for this point so i'm going to draw a line which is 30 mm off from this point like this now we can make a line which is 30 mm in this side to locate the end point of this arc then it will be very easy for us to make this arc so i'm going to make a line which is 30 mm from this side as well so this point is the start of the arc and this is the center of the arc whereas this point will be the end of the arc so we can easily make the arc of radius 30 by the help of this center by using a compass in this way we can easily make this arc now we have to extend this line which is of length 20 now i'm going to look at this and this point here we can see that the total length from this point and this point is 30 and the length of this gap is 10 so it means that the length of this and this part will be 30 minus 10 that is 30 minus 10 and when we divide it by 2 we will get the length of this part as 10 so i'm going to make a line which is 10 mm from this point and 10 mm from this point like this and we can see that the total height of this part is 40 so i'm going to extend a line which is 40 mm height from this point and this point and join it like this now i'm going to join this line and this line and here is no need of this line so i'm going to erase this unnecessary lines like this we need to make this part and this part in the front view also but i'm going to make it later after making the top view this part has the circles here we can see it so i'm going to make this part later now i'm moving towards the top view and i'm going to project a line from this point and this point to make the boundary of the top view now we can see that the total length of the top view is 100 and the total breadth is 50 so i'm going to make a rectangle of length 100 by 50 now i'm going to make these two rectangular parts which will be visible as a rectangle from the top view so i'm going to project the line from this four points now we can make the rectangle in this and this part and we will be able to see the hidden lines of this part and this part because our bottom view looks like this these hidden lines will be visible from the top view so we have to make the hidden lines of these points in the top view we have to project the lines from this and this points to the top view so this line will be a hidden line so we have to convert it into a hidden line like this 
Now we are going to look at this part in the top view and we can see that its total length is 24. So it means that the length of this line from the center line will be 24 by 2 that is equals to 12. So first of all I am going to make the center line in this side and we are going to make this point so this point is 12 mm away from the center line so I'm going to make a point which is 12 mm away from this point because this point resembles this point from the top view now we need to look at the center of this circle because it is not given in the quotient here and we can see that the total distance between this center and this center is 60 from the top view it means that the total length from this point and this point will be 60 minus 30 divided by 2 then this part will be 15 and this part will be 15 so our center is located at a distance of 15 from this point. Now we can easily make the circle of diameter 12 from this center and we can also make the semicircle which we can see in this part which has the diameter of 24 because this length also represents the diameter of this semicircle. So we have to make a circle of diameter 12 first but we can also make the semicircle of diameter 24 from the same center up to its center line. So I'm going to make the center line of these two circles first and I'm going to make a semicircle of diameter 24 in this part and we can see that this line is joined up to this point so I'm going to join this line and this line like this in this way we have completed our top view so our top view exactly looks like this in 3d I still haven't made this part and this part in the front view but now we have already made this parts in the top view so it will be very easy for us to project the lines from this point and this point to the front view like this and I can also project the lines from this point and this point of the top view to the front view to make the hidden lines of this cylinder and we can see from the given quotient that this part is started 10 mm below from this main per part so I'm going to make a line which is 10 mm below from this line like this and these two cylindrical parts will be visible like this in our front view and these two parts will be located from this point to this point so it will look like this now we need to make the hidden line from this point to this point because this is a complete hole from the top to the bottom part so we need to make the hidden line in this part and this part because these two parts are a complete hole and we will see the hidden line in the front view in this way our front view has also been completed so our front view exactly looks like this in 3d now we are moving towards the side view now I'm going to project the line from this side and this side to make the bounding plane of this side view. So our side view is going to be only in this part. We'll be able to see this solid line from this point. That means we'll be able to see a solid line from this point. So I'm going to project a line in the side view from this point like this. And we'll see this curved surface as a rectangular block from the side view. So first of all, I'm going to project these two lines to the side view. I have already projected this lines from the top view. Now I'm going to project this line to the side view because this line represents the height of this cylindrical block. So I'm going to project this line to the side view as well. Now I have projected the lines for this cylindrical part from the top view as well as from the front view. So our cylindrical block will be within this part. Now I'm going to project the lines from this point and this point and it will look like a hidden line from the side view like this. Now I'm going to convert these lines into the hidden lines and we can see that our cylindrical part is slightly down from this main upper part that is it is slightly 10 mm below so the hidden lines from the cylinder is also limited only in this part so I have made the hidden line in these two parts. We can clearly see that this cylindrical part has intersected this curved surface because of intersection of solid we will be able to see the slight effect of the intersection of solid in this part. This part is slightly curved it is not a perfect rectangle so we need to make this curved surface in the side view so we can project any points from this curved surface to our side view to see the effect due to the intersection of the solid i'm going to project this point number one that is this end of this circular surface and i'm projecting this point number one to our side view first of all i'm going to project this point number one to our front view and it has intersected in this point so these two points are intersecting at this point so this represents our point number one similarly i'm going to project this point number two in our front view and this point is intersecting at this point so i'm going to project this point in our side view as well similarly i'm going to project this point number two in our side view and it has intersected in this point so this point will be our point number two in our side view now i'm going to project this point number four and this point number four and point number two projects in the same line in our front view so i'm going to project this point number four in our side view and we can clearly see that this line has intersected in this point so this represents our point number four now i'm going to project this point number three and point number 
number 5 to our front view and we can see that this line has intersected in this point so this point represents our point number 3 so first of all I'm going to project this point number 3 to our side view and I'm going to project this point number 3 to our side view from the top view so it will intersect at this point so this point represents point number 3 and I'm going to project this point number 5 to our front view and it lies in the same point so I'm going to project this point number 5 to our side view and we can see that this line has intersected in this point so it represents point number 5 now we have to join these 5 points and you can join these by the help of the French curve or if you do not have French curve then you can join these lines manually we can see this line in our 3d view which is coming from this point number one that is this point from our front view so it will be seen as a hidden line from the side view so I'm going to project the line from this point to the side view and it will be seen as a hidden line along this side view so I have projected the line here and this line will be seen as a hidden line from this point to this point like this similarly we can also see this line in our 3d view which is coming from this point number three that is this point from our front view so we need to project a line coming from these points like this and we know that this line will be seen as hidden line from our side view so we should make this line as a hidden line in our side view like this in this way our left side view has also been completed so our side view exactly looks like this in 3D. In this way, we have completed the orthographic projection of the given object in third angle projection. And if you like my video, please like, share and subscribe.